Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here the video going over a $750 gaming PC. So recently I've done a couple videos, so for example I did a $500 build, which will allow you to play pretty much any game you want on medium to high settings for only about 500 bucks. And I've also done a full tutorial on how to put that computer together, or indeed pretty much any other PC that you want to build. However, today we're going to be doing something just a little bit more high end at $750. To kick our build off, we're going to be using an Intel Core i5-2500K. This is one of my favorite CPUs for gaming, as not only is it a quad-core chip, but it's also highly overclockable. So the stock is going to come in at about 3.3 GHz, however it is no problem at all to overclock it to well over 4 GHz, which is going to give you tons of power for running pretty much any game you throw at it. While the i5-3570K is definitely not a bad choice, I still do prefer the 2500K, as for the money you really just can't beat it. For about $200, a great start for our build. For a CPU cooler, we're going to be using the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Plus. Now I've used this in a lot of my gaming builds, in fact I've got one on the computer right behind me here. And the major reason is, is that for the price you really can't beat it. And when using a processor like the Core i5, which is really overclockable, you have to have some way of dissipating all that heat. And I find that the Hyper 212 Plus is a great way to go for only about $25. For a graphics card, we're going to be using an EVGA GTX 560 Superclocked. And while the new GTX 660s are going to be coming out soon, that does not mean anything bad as the 560 is still an awesome card, especially now that the price has been cut. As this is an overclocked card, that means you're going to have plenty of performance to handle pretty much any game you throw at it, including Battlefield 3. With 1GB of GDDR5 memory, it's not the most, but it's going to be plenty if you're only going to be gaming on a single 1080p monitor. For about $150, an excellent way to go. For the motherboard, we're going to be using a Gigabyte GAZ77D3H. Now I will admit, I'm kind of partial to Gigabyte motherboards, I use them myself in most of my builds, and for the most part I find that for the price they give you plenty of performance and plenty of features. On top of that they also do come with dual BIOS, which can really be a major lifesaver. And on top of that you're going to find quite a few USB 3 ports, SATA 3, and it even comes with an M SATA port. As this is a Z77 board, you have full capability for overclocking with your 2500K, and if you decide to upgrade to Ivy Bridge, it will handle that no problem as well. For $120, I highly recommend this motherboard. For memory, we're going to be using 8GB of PNY Optima RAM. This is the same stuff that I recently included in my $500 gaming build. While it's not fancy or special or anything like that, it is 8GB of memory clocked at 1333MHz. So, while it's not going to be amazing or spectacular or have fire or flames or anything cool is going to get the job done. It's also going to be really nice and cheap and only about $35. For a hard drive, we're going to be using a 500GB Western Digital Caviar Black. Now the Caviar Black is pretty much the standard gaming hard drive out there. Sure you can save a few dollars by getting something slower, but it's really not going to be worth it. Now if you need more storage, you can bump this up to a 1TB or even a 2TB Caviar Black. But for this build, we're just going to be using the 500GB version, which is going to run you about $85. For a power supply, we're going to be using the Corsair CX600. With 600 watts of capacity, this is going to be more than enough to handle the build, including overclocking your graphics card, your CPU, as well as just handling extra hard drives and all the kind of stuff you'd like to put in there. Since it is Corsair, it means you're going to get some solid quality, and for about $60, it's going to be well worth it. For a case, we're going to be using the Antec 300. Now, this is another one of those parts that I'm a really big fan of. I think that it's a solid buy for the price, and it has all the features and all the flexibility and all the kind of good stuff that you're looking for in a case. If you guys want to know more, I, of course I did use it in the $500 build, so if you guys want to follow that tutorial, you'll see that all the cable management and all that stuff is going to be the exact same. Overall though, really solid case for about $55. For an optical drive, we're going to be using a Sony DVD burner. Now this is optional, if you want to skip it by all means feel free, however in general I do like to include it in builds. It's not really going to cost you a whole lot and it gives you some more flexibility as far as installing windows or various different programs. However if you want to ditch it or you want to upgrade to a blu-ray player by all means feel free. Otherwise though this will run you about $18. Lastly, you may want to consider picking up a copy of Windows 7 Home Premium. Now I didn't do that in this build as I think that it's probably a better idea to just wait for Windows 8. However if you don't want to wait and you just want to get an operating system right now, or you're just not a big fan of Windows 8, you may want to consider adding it on and it'll be about $100. So there you guys have it, an awesome $750 gaming build. Now do keep in mind that prices are constantly fluctuating, so you may want to check the links in the description of this video to see what the current prices are now, but overall this is going to be a really awesome build. If you guys want a full tutorial on how to put together a gaming PC, definitely be sure to check out the link beside me right now. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, definitely be sure to leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more videos like this, be sure to subscribe.